Okay, now throughout this course, together we've been thinking about a lot of equations. And we've seen uh, equations with sometimes more than one variable, like x's and y's and so forth, where in fact one unknown actually leads to the value of another unknown. And so two things are actually related somehow. Maybe they're proportional, maybe you have some equation where they're both in it or something or whatever. Well, a lot of times, in fact, more times than not, having a visual image, a visual idea about that relationship between two unknowns could be extremely powerful in understanding sort of what's going on. And so this really gets into a whole realm of, of mathematics, which we could think of as graphing or, or visual mathematics. And so I, want, I now want to begin by just talking about graphing equations. So what does it mean to graph an equation in the plane? So of course we have the, the x-axis and the y-axis. Um, look at what I'm doing, the x-axis. It's the x-axis here and the y-axis here. And what we want to do is go over some number of x values and then up or down some number of y values and we can graph things. And we can start to get a picture image for what something is looking like okay? and the relationship. So now I want to illustrate this by looking at a variety of really important types of equations. And the way we'll start to graph them, just for, for now anyway, is just to sort of see some points and see how the relationship goes. For example, suppose I have that y equals 2x plus 1. So what that means is that for this thing to be satisfied, I have to find x's and y's that make this true. So one way to do that is to make a little table of possibilities. So for example, what I could do here is make a little chart and put like x values here and then figure out the corresponding y values. So I could pick, for example, some negative values, maybe like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so forth, just to get some values. And now for each of these x values, I'll plug that value into here for x and find out what the associated y value would be. For example, if I plug in negative 2 here, I see negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 1 would be negative 3. Here, when I plug in negative 1 for x, I would see 2 times negative 1, which would be negative 2, plus 1 would be negative 1. If I plug in a 0 here, I would just see that plus 1. If I plug in a 1 here, I'd see 2 plus 1, which is 3. If I plug in a 2 in here, I would see 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So now I have a chart of points. You can think of these as ordered pairs. Minus 2 comma minus 3. Minus 1 comma minus 1. 0 comma 1. 1 comma 3. 2 comma 5. And I can actually plot those points now on a graph. And we can see what this thing looks like. So let's try to do that right now. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And so what do we see here? Minus 2 comma minus 3. So let's say this is minus 2, 1, 2. That's negative 2 in the x. Minus 3 down, 1, 2, 3. So I put a dot right there. That's minus 2 comma minus 3. Then I have minus 1 comma minus 1. Minus 1 comma minus 1. Put a dot there. Then I have 0. So that's just on the y-axis. If x is 0, we're on the y-axis, 1. Then I have 1, 3, so I go 1 over and 3 up, 1, 2, 3. Oops, 1, 2, 3. And then I have 2, 1, 2, and then I go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So one thing I can do is just connect those points and see what this thing visually looks like. And if I connect those points, what you see is what looks like a straight line. A straight line seems to pass very well right through all those points. So in fact, this kind of object where you see an x and a y all to the first power like that will represent something that graphically looks like a straight line. And I want us to all start getting in the habit of looking at this and just thinking some kind of straight line. I don't know maybe what kind. There are a lot of different straight lines. This straight line turns out to be the one associated with this. So there's our first really basic kind of equation. It's a straight line. OK, let's take a look at another one together. Okay. The next one I want to take a look at is the following. How about y equals 3x squared? And again, I'll make a table just to see what these values look like. As I change x, what happens to y? So I'll pick, let's say, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. You can pick other points, too. I'm just picking these just to illustrate what's going on. So for each of these x values, I have to square it and multiply it by 3. So minus 2 squared is negative 4. New. No. 
minus 2 squared is actually 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0. 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. So now I have all these values, and let's see what happens if we plot them. So if we plot them, I have minus 2, so 1, 2 in the negative direction. 12, uh-oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this point right here is the point minus 2, comma 12. And then minus 1, comma 3, so minus 1, comma 3, 1, 2, 3. Look how steep that is. It really drops, it really drops a lot, pretty dramatic. 0, 0, so then I go right to the origin. 1, 3, so then I go 1 over and 3 up. And then 2, 12 is way up here. So it sort of comes down and then goes up. Look how symmetric, by the way, those points are. In fact, they line up perfectly like a little mirror right across from these things. Sort of interesting. OK, so what would the graph what would it look like if you sort of connect those points? Well, if we connect those points, I'd have to sort of bend this thing up to fit them. And it sort of looks like this, doesn't it? it sort of look like this. And actually, this is an example of a parabola. And in fact, whenever you see an equation like this, where one of the variables just is to the first power, but the other variable is a squared, then you're going to have a parabola. And, and it turns out that if this coefficient here is very large, the parabola will be very, very tight. It'll be very, very tight. Like this is very, very tight. If that number were smaller, the, the, the effect would be to make this thing a little bow out more. <laughs> And if it's really small, it would even go like this. And the parabola would become very wide and so forth. If the, that number is, increases, then the parabola tightens up like this and wants to close up like that. So in fact, this is a great example of a parabola. And you can see I found that just by plotting points. OK, let's try another one. OK, uh, I wish I had that back. Let me bring this back up here because. The next one is so close to this one, I wanted you to see the difference. So the next one is actually this. y equals 3x squared plus 1. So in fact, it looks like the exact same equation as this, but I just added 1 to the, to the end here. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll just make my chart in black. So you know the black corresponds to the black equation, and this purple corresponds to the purple stuff here. And again, I'll put down minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. If I put in minus 2 in here and square it and multiply by 3, I get 12. But now I have to add 1, so I have 13. Minus 1 in here produces a 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. 0 in here makes a 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 in here makes 3 plus 1 is 4. And then 2 in here makes a 12 plus 1 is 13. You'll notice that, in fact, these values are exactly the same as the y values, but they've all been increased by 1. 12 plus 1 is 13. 3 plus 1 is 4. 0 plus 1 is dim, 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 dim. And that makes sense, because in each case, all I did was take the old answer, but increase the y by 1. So each of these values are one more than their counterparts. So what would happen if I graphed that? If I graphed that, what I would see is every point would just go up by 1. You see? So this would be up by one unit. This would be up by one unit. This would be up by one unit, up by one unit, and up by one unit. So if I looked at the graph of that, it would be the exact same graph that we had before. So this was the graph we had before, let me remind you. But now I have to move it up by one. Watch what happens. Exact same graph, but just shift it up by one. So notice that it's still a parabola. It's just that now it moved up a little bit because I added 1 to the very end. Without adding 1, whoop, I get that. I add 1, whoop, I get that. What do you think would happen if I put a 2 in there? That's right. It would just go up by 2. See what that is? What if I had a minus 1 at the very end? Then a minus 1 would actually, instead of being here, I'd push down by 1. Whoop. So you can see this by adding how the effect it has on a graph. Let's try another example. x equals y squared. Let's make a table here, x and y. Now notice something here. If I start to plug in a value, like I put in 2 here, 
it's going to be sort of hard to figure out what the y's are. If I put in a 3 here, OK, what's that? It would be easier to actually put the y values in and then fill in the x values. So let me actually do that. I'll put in negative 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 here. These are y values, and I now want to see the corresponding x value because it's easier. If I put in a minus 2 for y, if I square it, I see 4. Minus 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So now I have these points. Let's see what they look like. So here's the axes. And let's graph. Graph away. Here we go. So I have 4 in the x, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I go negative 2 in the y, 1, 2. So I put a point right there. Then I have 1 minus 1, so I put a point right here. Then I have 0, 0, so I put a point right there. Then I have 1, comma 1, so I put a point right there. And then I have 4, comma 2, 1, 2, so I put a point right there. So if we connect those things, what do we see? Well, we actually see a curve that looks sort of like this. You see? And again, we see a shape that looks like a parabola this parabola curve. And notice something interesting. In the previous example, where the parabola went like this, notice that was the case where we had the x squared. Now we have the y squared, and notice the parabola is going in this direction. And that's not a fluke. In fact, if you have y squareds, the parabola will either be like this or like this. Whereas if we have x squareds, and the y is just appearing to the first power, the parabolas would be either up or down. So parabolas with y squared will look sort of like this or like this. And with x squareds, the parabolas will look like this or like this. So it's sort of neat. In this case, this parabola looks just like that, sort of a sideways parabola. OK, I thought I'd do one last one with you. And this last one is y equals the absolute value of x. So let's make a table of points here, x and y, and see what happens. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So we're just taking absolute value of x. So absolute value of negative 2, that's just 2. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Absolute value of 1 is 1. 2 is 2. That was pretty fast. What does this look like? Minus 2, 1, 2. And I go up 2, 1, 2. Minus 1, 1. And 0, 0. Looks like a nice straight line, doesn't it? But let's see what happens now. 1, 1. Uh-oh. So much for the straight line, 2, 2. So it looks like almost sort of a parabola-like thing, but in fact it's not. It goes straight down like this and then comes straight out. So in fact, the look is something like this. It comes straight down and then goes straight out. So it makes this sort of sharp V here. And this is what the absolute value equation looks like. It usually is made up of two wings, and they're both very sharp like this. One goes straight down, one goes straight up like that. These are some very, very basic equations, where we're getting a sense of what the picture of these relationships look like by making a little table and graphing. Up next, we'll start learning how to graph things in a slightly more sophisticated way. But for now, visual with each picture, with each, with each equation, sorry. See you soon.